Hi, everybody. Hi. And I wanted to introduce you to a interview with Jordan today. Jordan, hello. Hi. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Jordan, as you know, is story number 39, is number 39 for how to attract the next person. You can come on and chat to us today and share a bit of the story. In the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. <laughs> my, I, I might just hold my phone just because it's probably easier. No. And I'll put it, put it in. No. Okay. No. Yeah. Hi. Falls <laughs> again, don't worry. It's not the perfect interview style here. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's super, super low maintenance. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. start wherever you want to start. Um, yeah. So, well, it's kind of an interesting situation. I mean, I obviously I told you I went through I went through this breakup um, in July, and uh, it kind of it sparked. I think more than anything, more than what I want to share about my story in terms of like still being connected with this person, um, because in some ways our relationship is changing and I th I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad thing I think it's actually a really good thing um, because it doesn't mean that there's not love there you know what I mean it means that in the grand scheme of maybe what we want to call the universe or what you want to call uh, this higher power um, things change sometimes and it doesn't mean that it's not going to be what you want it to be i just think that there are many different ways of in of receiving love and and understanding what love is in in the context of a relationship between two people you know yeah i think i think um the most important thing that happened for me was understanding what self love was and that like self-love is really a blend of self-compassion and understanding um, what it means to get back to your experience of the world. Um, I think a lot of the emails I received from people were very, you know, very pointed about like, well, I went through this breakup, I want to get this person back and all these yeah. things. Um, which for sure I did as well. And I, I, I think that the main objective sometimes is not exactly what we think it is. I think the, I think the objective is um, how do I return home? First of all, how do I return to me? Okay. Like how do I figure out what is going on with me? Why am I attracted to this person? Why am I seeking this out? Um, and it, in a way, I know that people that are going through breakups, like these are the things that they don't want to hear, you know? Yeah. They're, the, they're the things that you don't, you don't want to make the time to understand. Mm. Um, and I think like, if there's anything I'd, I'd want to share, it's that like I tried to do, and I'm continuing to do the hard work of like, figuring those things out because there is without that there's no foundation um am i making sense i feel yeah, like uh, yeah uh, yeah you know it's interesting to um, bring that up because i was thinking about that this week why why do you want the specific person that you want like just yeah. to say it to yourself like why why mm -hmm. do you go above and beyond falling over yourself for them what is it and and to ask and self reflect so it is a like you say it's what not you just want the person back and you're focused on that focused on that focused on that right. sit and ask yourself that question right it's almost like what the exactly it's almost like what do they represent like what do they yep. to you what what is this specific person represent you know and i i for me you know i've had a, a series of uh, I mean, I, I don't like calling any relationship a failed relationship, but I, I like to I like to say that everything is a learning experience. But I've had a series of really painful experiences um, where you know I was it was almost like borderline like obsessing with these people. You know, like I would 
I would get to the point where, you know, I mean, I never did anything overtly stalkerish or anything like that. You know, I never like crossed any boundaries, but you know, I, I definitely, I would be open and vulnerable and I would say, you know, like, I want to be with you. These are the things I'm feeling. Mm. Um, you know, really just sometimes like not understanding that like people have emotional boundaries sometimes that in those moments you can't cross. Um, and that, that gives you a feeling of shame and a feeling of rejection in and of itself because you're vulnerable and you're putting yourself out there and you're saying, you know, I really love you and all these things. But it's like the direction of those emotions actually comes from our own unmet needs, you know? Um, so the thing I want to share with everyone, if I can, is that you have to figure out two things. You have to figure out what do you feel and what do you need? Yeah. Because those are the things that we are born uh, with an innate understanding of, right? If we have our primal needs, obviously food, water, shelter, whatever, right? Yeah. And, and then we have the feelings that are uh, insinuated to us by our caregivers, our early caregivers. So when we live this experience of loving other people as adults, we get we re obviously we replay these attachment traumas that happen to us when we're young you know when we're kids so yeah. we we lose the connection the innate connection that we have with our feelings and our needs um and if you want to work with the law of attraction you have to realize that like your brain is programmed from an early age to think of attachment in a certain way, right? Like we have these ideas about attachment. We have these ideas about feelings and emotions and how we express those things. And of course, the people that we are attracted to for a reason uh, might represent, you know, the way that our needs haven't been met, right? So we're attracted to that, like, Say, for instance, for me, it was like being attracted to uh, emotionally unavailable people for any rich reason. Um, you know, being attracted to people that uh, aren't in touch with their emotions at all. Um, and it's like, it's funny because you have to like somehow flip your mind over and like readjust the programming before you can then even begin to use the manifestation technique, right? So you have to do the work of like, how does, what is my core feeling? What are my thoughts that are on repeat? What does my inner critic say to me all the time that prevents me from achieving the highest of my abilities, you know? Mm. Um, and that is actually what you're attracting more because people talk about the subconscious mind and they talk about affecting the subconscious mind and repeating messages to affect the subconscious mind. But for me personally, the only way that that works is if you really look at how I'm programmed, like what, what were the things that I wasn't given? What were the thing, what were the needs that I had that weren't met? You know, was it love? Yes. Was it, was it closeness? Was it, you know, a parent that said, Hey, it's okay if you feel sad. You know, it's okay if you feel uh, ashamed, you know. Um, and I think a lot of, um, particularly a lot of the, you know, the gay community or the LGBTQ community, queer community, what have you, um, innately we live sort of in a, in a way that, we live in a society that tells us that we're not, um, that we're not normal, you know, in many, in many ways. Um, in my experience, a lot of the time being, you know, being a person of color and being queer, like I live in a world that tells me that like I'm different and that what I believe in my life, like doesn't matter in some ways, you know? Yeah. Um, and like that can create what we call like toxic shame, like the feeling of being ashamed, being outside of society, um, looking in, you know, something's wrong with me. Something is, something about my life is different from everyone else's. Um, 
So like, if anything, I want to encourage people to like incorporate the feeling of shame mm. and incorporate those, those feelings that make you feel like an outsider because they're not real. They're not real. You have to form those things for yourself. Um, they're real in the sense of, yes, you feel them and it's justified. You know, racism exists. Yeah. Uh, homophobia does exist. Those things in the world do exist. But for yourself, it's like, how do you find a home where you can be okay? Mm. Um, and those things are what are the beginning of manifestation. They're not like the end result of attracting a specific person is entirely possible, but it has to come from a place of like breaking down your defenses, breaking down the ways in which you're keeping out what we call the resistance, right? Yeah. You know, resistance isn't just, oh, I'm feeling kind of negative uh, about this. Resistance isn't, you know, let me just only think positively and then it will happen. Um, resistance is really more of an integral thing. Like what, it, what are my life experiences that keep me from achieving my goals? Um, whether that's being with a specific person or uh, manifesting a, you know, a new house or a new car or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think that for me, like the work, at least in my story has, was, and it's funny too, because I started this not, not more than, you know, two months ago, understanding these things. Oh, I have, I'm codependent, right? Like yeah. I have these attachment traumas where I'm severely anxious when I attach to people. Yep. Um, and then you realize, okay, well, even if I'm attracted to this, for all intents and purposes, emotionally unavailable person, how emotionally unavailable are they? You know, mm. they have in many ways, a similar attachment trauma that you do, hence the law of attraction, right? Yeah. Like attracting like. But in that situation, you put up defenses, for instance, a lot of people, unhealthy relationships, right? Stonewalling, compromise, um, not being open with their feelings, avoiding rejection, avoiding abandonment, all these things. We form these ways that push people away from us because we don't want to feel the hurt and we don't want to relive those traumas. Yeah. So the funny thing is back to your question, why do you want this specific person? You in a way I have realized are attracted to them because they mirror the same mm. thing that you're going through. So if you do this work, in a way, you end up not being attracted to that person. But it's not to say that all of a sudden that option is off the table. You know, if you do this integral work of figuring it out, becoming your better self, um, owning your own feelings, mm. owning your own emotions, not disavowing your emotions to put on someone else. Yep. Uh, um, you can you can effectively have anything that you desire, right? But you might realize that that person comes zooming back into your life and they don't have the tools. They might not have the tools, you know? Um, you can say up and down, you know, this is what I figured out and this, you know, I'm, I'm learning these things and I, I will be a better partner to you this time. I'll be all these things. And sure, yeah, it can work. But at the end of the day, if you have figured out those things and you have a new sense of self-worth, is that relationship going to give you everything that you need? You know, it could. It very well could be. Yeah. It very well could be. Um, but I think that, like, the beginnings of actually making m making it happen attracting a specific person into your life has to come from an innate understanding of how to own your own space yeah how to how to self soothe how to you know abraham hicks talks about getting into the vortex the vortex is really nothing other than being like i exist 
Mm. And just, just from, ha- just from existing, I have value. Yep. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and yes, that wasn't anything that I knew in my life. Yeah. Which, which is crazy. Like, um, Jordan, can I ask what's your background? Like, where are you born and what, like, just, is there any cultural influences in that as well? Right. So I, I was born in Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I was raised in Buffalo, New York. Um, and I, my dad is, my dad's black. My mom's white. Um, yeah. uh, my dad is also a Cherokee, you know, part Cherokee. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm an American. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm a Francophone, so, you know, I'm really into French. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I speak French. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm an opera singer. I was, yeah, people have heard my story. I'm an opera singer. I live in New York. Yeah. And, um, travel the world. I spend a lot of time in Scandinavia. Uh, yeah. I have really good friends in Denmark. Yeah. Um, so. And did you go yeah. like with the opera singing and the creative work? Did you go straight from school into that? I so yeah. Well, I, I did my undergrad and and then like near Buffalo, and then I did my masters at Buff, uh, Boston University, and then I moved to Europe for a little while, did like a summer program thing, um, and came back to New York and started auditioning taking coachings, taking lessons and just working up from there. And now I'm, I'm in a really interesting transition point in, in my life where I'm, um, you know, doing what we call young artist programs where, you know, cause I'm, I'm 28 years old right now. And, yep. uh, young, young artist programs are, you know, they go anywhere from like 23 years old to like 32, you know? <laughs> so you have this time just cause the voice takes sometimes takes a while to mature and, yeah. um, so I, yeah, that's what I've been doing. It's pretty cool. This past summer, I was at Opera Saratoga doing their young artist program. And then obviously, I'm, like I said, I'm going to the Hawaii Opera Theater for uh, about three months coming up. And, and yeah. your, your creative work and your specific person are dovetail together. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And that, and that is also something that, you know, it, it can bring... Uh, a whole new set of (laughs) of obstacles to the situation. Um, Yeah. So sometimes it's important to, even, even if things, you know, say for instance, things don't work out, uh, it's important to maintain, uh, you know, a healthy relationship, working relationship with people, no matter what. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Mm -hmm. Cause that's a part of you, whether that person there is there or not that's you and the creative you that something that you love. So it's yeah. you know, like you say, it is, I think those sorts of things are important to continue. Even if a relationship breaks down, it's those things that will help pull you out of the dark spaces. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's been such a blessing, you know, like I, I my work is creation. Like my work is, yeah. is, creation and it is it's so funny like the vocal instrument like learning how to sing um understand i mean opera singing in, in general is an is an athletic like olympic event you know i mean yeah you have to, it's your whole body is in, is involved but um a lot of like what i've what i've been learning about psychology is actually very true about the voice as well you know um, we have an end result, right, of this beautiful sound um, that ideally we're making all the time. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes not so much. But it's a it's a technique, you know. You work on breathing. You work on the breath. You work on engaging the body correctly to create the sound. Mm. And and it's an ever flowing thing. So when you are inside of the art form, it's a living, breathing thing that is unlike anything. I mean, I, I wish people experienced these kinds of things in their day-to-day life every day because it's really liberating um, and beautiful, beautiful thing, you know? Mm. So I would rather, I wouldn't, I'll die if I don't sing, you know, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. It's almost like if you don't do your creative pursuit, 
-hmm. you go into depression or you go into feeling frustrated or you know it really yeah. does it's like it's like a need that it has yeah. to come out absolutely all yeah. the time it, you know it's like a sometimes when i know that i haven't been singing as much or you know really invested in the work you know sure i'll pra I practice every day but sometimes you know there's difference there's a difference between uh you know cognitive directed practice and just practicing just to get things out of the way yeah. and i can tell when i haven't been really invested in things because it mm. you know up here i get a little yeah. <laughs> i get a little loopy you know so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's lovely. It's so mm -hmm. great to hear. Well, because I think, you know, I get a lot of emails from people wanting a specific person back and coming from that place of real rejection or hurt or neediness with a breakup or whatever. And yeah. mm -hmm. it is so important to, if, if, like you said, whether you end up back together or not, part of the getting back together is getting yourself back together first but part of getting yourself back together is some kind of you got to get into music or dance or walking in nature or running or yeah. canoeing or whatever something that you're just drawn to and distract yourself away yeah absolutely absolutely it's 100 percent yeah that. because it's breaking the obsession you got to break your own obsession because it will yeah. Destroy your physical body with bad, like through health, it'll destroy you through yeah. some illness. Or <coughs> I remember I was completely, really disturbed by a breakup and stuff that was happening. I had like three car accidents in like a very yeah. short period of time. None of them were sure. probably fatal because I'm still here, but yeah. it was like the mental state. It's like this big magnet to yeah. accidents, health issues you know, financial disasters, losing your home, you know, whatever, it breaks right. everything down. It does. And I, I mean, I can attest to that. Like my, you know, in the past, you know, when it happened, my life started to kind of, you know, fall apart in many ways, but the obsessive part of it, you know, it's funny because like, even if you do want to reattract a specific person into your life, you have to get rid of that anyways, you know, you have to, because that state of mind um, is focused on, a, you know, obviously future thoughts, right? We're talking about anxiety at the nature of it, you know, it's focused on future thoughts, which isn't the now, first of all. Yeah. And second of all, it removes you away from what I like to call the animal aspect of our bodies, right? that our bodies have they are the animal that carries this yeah. this thing this like incredibly powerful thing and when we remove our relationship with that we can't do any work here we can't do any healthy work here yeah. at all yeah. so you like pe you know people were emailing me i'm sure you get these emails as well but i mean i people were emailing me asking me like you know how did you let them I'm like well it's not really about letting go. Yes, you let go, but you're letting go of the obsession. You have to drop the story. Yep. Okay, because the story is from the past. Yep. It's from the past, and it's not now, and it certainly affects your emotions now, without a doubt. Yep. But you have to cognitively say, okay, I can let this go. Mm. I'm going to let it go. Yep. I'm going to drop that story. I'm going to create a new story. Mm. where I figure out myself, I figure out my things, I take care of my body, I take care of my mind, yeah. and then I do the visualization work and the meditation work to then bring in the things that I desire, whether that's this person, whether that's you know this job or whatever. Mm. Um, and I think that that is like, it's tough. No doubt about it. It's tough because you have to go through and this is another thing I wanted to say on yes too, like um, that I feel like a lot of people, um, and I'm sure again, you get the emails, you know, but people don't allow their themselves the time to go through the grieving. Yep. Because that's an important process. If you start the work of reattracting, I feel this is me. I think this is true. If you start it too early. Yeah. 
you don't allow yourself time to view the situation objectively, to grieve, and then get, a, get to a point of acceptance that that, because regardless, if you're trying to start a new relationship with anyone, let alone someone that you've been with, it has to be a completely new relationship. Yeah. Otherwise, it, and this is exactly what's happened to me in the recent past, this person showed up again and I was not ready Yeah. in some ways, you know, I wasn't able to like really hold my own in some, in some moments, not, not entirely. I mean, yeah, you know, but in some moments I wasn't able to really hold my own and, and think to myself, okay, I'm enough. I'm secure. I'm loved. I'm all these things. Um, and I, you, you let the actions affect you at an emotional level. And that's, it's not okay. It's yeah. just not how it's going to work. So yeah. the grieving process is important. It is. It's important yeah. um, to move you know, past it's it. it's interesting you going to Hawaii because Hawaii being the home of Ho'oponopono. Yes. And about dissolving the part of you that creates all this external stuff. Oh yeah, you know, I've thought about it. Yeah, it's so like what you're saying, you're dissolving all the old childhood stuff, so you're no yeah. longer trying to suck something out of somebody that didn't cause it and can't cure it in the first. Right. Place. Exactly. Right. And and you know it was so funny because when I talked when I talked to him, I mean, he was very he was blunt. And he was like, "Yeah, I realized we were in a lot of pain. We were in a lot of." Yeah. You know, and I, he was like, I was mad that someone put you in so much pain. Yeah. You know, how, what a loving thing to say, Is but it? you know, it, it was true. And I, you know, in, in a way it's like, Oh my goodness, thank you. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that you said that. I'm grateful that mm. I'm grateful that this separation happened. I'm, I'm grateful that yeah. I've had this opportunity to be able to like confront my own, mm. my own shit. And anything is possible from that point. Yeah. Anything, absolutely anything. And we don't see it as a blessing, but the specific person gives you the greatest gift of all, which is healing that stuff that you've been dragging around from one relationship to the next. Absolutely. Or being not in relationship and desperately wanting one, whatever your scenario is. Right. Um, and gay or straight, black or white, yeah. religious, spiritual, atheist, who cares? It is across the board. Absolutely. It's the human experience. It's, it's no the human experience. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's no different. And it, it, it also, it, it empowers you to be able to help others. You know, I mean, we talk about this, like living, living through that, that end of helping other people to, you know, soothe them through what they're going through. You know, it does yeah. bring about that sense of, Yeah. 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 It, it's helpful. It's helpful. It is. It is. Yeah. So you said you had some updates. Was that about the relationship that the, the singing, did you want to share any more about since you wrote yeah. me the story? Well, yeah. I mean, basically what I've realized is that, um, the situation is, it's, it's growing, you know, it's, it's happening. It's happening. It's not, it's not yet at the point I'd like it to be because I think that what I've realized is that this work is actually almost more important for me to do, mm. you know, um, because I tried and the opportunity was there, you know, like I told you that opportunity showed right up in my existence. Um, but I think that I've discovered over those few days where we, we saw each other, I was like, you know what? my experience is this is really good this yeah. is really really good i love you a lot yeah. <laughs> but this is actually really good and yeah. i if i am going to be able to like head first jump into that i need to figure out this stuff because otherwise i'll just end up being in a cycle of the same thing over and over again yeah and quite frankly i you know i did i got there were moments where i got needy and and um you know a little desperate and emotional but it's like i'm human you know like how can i not yeah. and 
it, it's not that we're like completely out of contact, like we're, you know, we're still in, in touch, but that's fine. That's okay. You know, that's a step ahead from where I was. <laughs> and and I, think, that, I think Jordan, it's, you know, there's always this, um, uh, I've got to rush and get over there again. It's actually the opposite, slowing it down. Yeah. Taking a bit longer. Yeah. Allowing. I mean, Abraham Hicks talks about the art of allowing, the art of allowing. She says that a million times you get to the point where you almost don't hear it. Yeah, it absolutely. It really is the turtle wins the race. It's, the it's true. It's true because also like it, you know, they talk about divine timing between two people. Like, there are things sometimes that you're like, yeah, this I'm attracting this person back, but it's like those same issues are still there, you know, and they've moved in a direction. Yeah. And that, you know, and like, so you're at their point of attraction and your point of attraction are meeting up again. Yeah. But there's still something that's not quite right, you know, with you. Yeah. So it's reflected back to you in that situation and your triggers and all those things. You're like, shit like i've really got it you know i got like uh, that's me i gotta figure that i gotta figure that out so yeah you know then you think to yourself wait a minute if i take a step back i allow them to do their work and i really invest in my work eventually that point of attraction could come back right could yeah. really just but you have to keep you know we can't disavow the fact that like psychology is still psychology. You can't, you can't, you know, be throwing negative things at people and expect them to stay around, you know, um, because that is really like, it's hard to come back from that. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's hard to come back from that point. So yeah. um, when you notice that you are not maybe engaging in the healthiest of behaviors, i.e. texting a lot or calling a lot or sending yeah. long messages, long, you know, take a step back. Mm. I, I've, w the thing I realized was I needed to say my piece. I needed to say, you know, I'm figuring these things out. If I'm going to be able to reconnect with you, I want to be, I want it to be a, from a place of wholeness, yeah. not a place of lack. And you know, I need to take some time away and, and that's, what's going to be healthy for me. Yes. So that leaves the door open for that person to then re-enter, mm. re-enter your life, you know, at a future time. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's like, why do you want this person? You could be happy with, you know, a whole number of people. I mean, there's 6 billion people in the world. Yeah. So, and I remember it, um, with the, within the, one of the Neville groups that has the best minds that, mm -hmm. that I've come across, there was um, a discussion about that if you are really in a state of self-love and knowing that you are, because Neville talks about states of being, that if you hold the state of being really loved, really wanted and secure within yourself and at peace and you are calm emotionally, anyone could be your specific person. And I know a lot of people don't like hearing that, I but, know. It, but it's about you, this whole thing that there's one soulmate and they're the only one. And I think, well, what if I've got, okay, if we go off that, if I've only got one soulmate and that person dies and I'm 28 years old like you, what yeah. so I have to be totally on my own until I die. And if I believe in reincarnation in the next yeah. lifetime, like exactly, exactly. That's tragic. I know it's tragic and it prevents you from living your fullest experience. Anyhow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. I think, I think believing that one person can fulfill all of your needs is a fallacy. Of course. Yeah. yeah. If you fulfill your own needs though, you know, I had a great discussion with a friend yesterday who she's dating this guy. She's madly in love with him, but he's young. You know, he's really, she's in her thirties. You know, she's, but he's really young. He's like, you know, in his early twenties yeah. and she, you know, she loves him. She loves him. And of course there are, there are things that come with being in different places in your life, but you, you have to be able to accept someone for where they're at unconditionally for where they're at even if even if that means that they don't love you yeah yep. right now or yes. 
yeah. you know, or that they can't. And it doesn't mean that the law of attraction can't bring that person back into your experience. But yeah. the, the, what I like to say to people is it's, it's the how. It's the technique to do that comes from doing inner work. Yeah. And then literally anything is possible. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of life, you can take the time to take the time to do it. Or you cannot, or you can, you can pine over one person, you know, repeatedly yeah. over and over and over again from that place of, I need, I lack, I don't have, um, yeah. and, or you can, you can do the work and then watch how mm. magical it can be to see, see these things unfold in front of you. The whole, like, you know, I, the whole kind of work that I was doing was basically just meditation and visualization. You know, I would sit there and I said, you know, cause I, back when I lived in Boston for grad school, I spent a lot of time at the Cambridge Zen center. Yeah. Um, if anyone from CZC watches this video, <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um, the Cambridge Zen Center is a fantastic place. You know, obviously it's a, it's a quantum Zen, Zen meditation community. Yeah. And I was so into it when I was living there, I was obsessed with this stuff. Um, and frankly, when I moved to Boston, I went through a really hard breakup and, and I, that's what got me into it. Um, I didn't do any kind of visualization or any kind of stuff back then. Zen meditation is very much like um, sitting just to sit right uh they talk about um the skandhas are like okay you can't very well and i love this this is something that i love they say you can't very well be walking while you're sitting yeah which means that your mind has the ability to be walking while you're sitting yeah right yeah. So if you treat your mind the same way you're treating your body, because they are connected, you sit and you sit and that's it. And they talk about also like an empty room, right? Say for instance, you're sitting in an empty room and you watch who shows up. Okay. Your mind, if, if I'm focused on just sitting and I can see the floor in front of me, right? Cause Zen meditation, your eyes are actually open. Um, I see the floor in front of me, but I can still see images, yeah. things happening in my brain. And I bring my concentration back to the breath, right? Bring it back. And I allow those things to happen, but I don't judge them. They just go by, you know? Yeah. Um, in a way, you realize, wait a minute, I am experiencing, it's me, right? Who is the thing on the inside that is experiencing the world? And you do that for enough time, you realize nothing really is going to throw you off balance. Nothing anyone does or says is going to throw you off that balance. Um, or, you know, I mean, of course, you, it doesn't mean you don't feel your emotions. You know, you're still a human being. But the beauty of it is that, like, you still have a fundamental experience of the world. Um, you know, the the master from Zen center was, he always said, you know, if someone got rid of your sight, got rid of your hearing, got rid of your smell and your sense of touch, you would still have an experience of the world. Yeah. So think about it. It would be a miserable existence, of course, without any of your senses, but you would, something inside of you would still be experiencing the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. So from that point, then you visualize, okay, I'm in this place of wholeness and understanding, right? And I go into a, my Agnes Vivarelli guided meditation where, <laughs> <laughs> where I imagine myself with that specific person. And, but it consistently from that place of wholeness, um, you know, moving forward in wholeness. Yeah. And, and what, what does that feel like? What does that smell like? What does that, you know, taste like for you? It's like, it's the best ever, yeah. you know, yeah. to imagine that kind of connection with another human being. But 
it's where you're focused on what you can give, not what you can get. Yeah. You know, what can I give? What can I give? What can I yeah. give? And I think, Jordan, I do see something that saddens me every time I read it is when I see someone in neediness, which is mm -hmm. in itself not, not an issue if you work on it yourself. But when they're in neediness and they project that onto someone and that someone feels suffocated and doesn't want any, just starts to back away more and more and more. Yeah. Then the first person goes into control and punishing that other person. And that is something I always find very difficult to read in emails where I'm not getting love from you. So I'm going to punish you for that rather yeah. than go, you know what, if they're not loving me, what am I doing? I need to love myself and I need to allow them to not love me right now until I get myself back on board. And if right. I'm in a loving state, I will probably attract it at some stage later on. Absolutely. That punishing that nasty drama creating punishing thing that some of us have had in us and that I read. Mm -hmm. It is like you say, you do that stuff. It creates damage. And it does. Yeah. Very, very hard for people to forgive that stuff when you've come at them to punish them because you feel unloved, unwanted, un, un, um, unworthy. Yeah. Yeah. All those things. And you, yeah just absolutely smash someone with it through anger, through over texting, through, you yeah. know, and thinking that your behavior is behavior is justified because you're not giving me. That's something I want to mention today because I hear a lot of people doing it. I think it is one of the big red lights that needs to be addressed. If you are someone that's doing that and you need yeah. to come back to yourself and deal with yourself and not be, smashing something, pouring petrol on it and lighting a match. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's what happens. And then you know what? Sometimes you can't come back from it. Yeah. And I mean, I've done it. Like I, you know, just yesterday, you know, I sent too long of a message. It was too, you know, <laughs> granted, granted, you know, I mean, it was fine. It was like, you know, it was me being like, you know, I, I got to stop my neediness. I'm telling you that, you know, I yeah. feel needy. I'm going to stop that. I'm let you do your thing. I'm going to do my thing, yeah. you know, and that's fine. But, you know, of course, I don't expect anything from that. I don't expect a response from that because I'm not trying to seek the validation of yeah. being heard. But the rebuttal, the, 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 the anger that comes sometimes from our defenses of like being, well, I'm not being loved yeah. is kind of, it's irreparable sometimes, you know. Yeah. I mean, sure, <clears throat> give it, you know, four or five years you meet that person again, you say, look, Hey, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, like that was, but it's gotta be, it can't be like, you know, constantly messaging someone expecting, yeah, expecting them to sometimes they don't know what to say. Yeah. They don't know what to say because I mean, I've been in situations where, you know, I had, I had an ex-boyfriend who, you know, it wasn't so much that he was needy. It was that, I didn't know. I didn't know what to say to him to comfort that because it seemed yeah. like something that I couldn't yeah. fix. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he got, he got upset, you know, he got upset, but it, you know, it takes a specific kind of person. If we talk about a specific person <laughs> to forgive and understand with compassion, those things that happen. Yeah. And unfortunately, not everyone is that, you know, not everyone can be as forgiving and understanding. Yeah. Especially if you spew, you know, well, you know, F you, this, you yeah. know, like you but never I, loved me. Yeah. Or texting someone or calling them a hundred times a day or no, no, abusing okay. them. You know, I've, I've, I've had people that have been physically um, abused in ways from, from these scenarios, physically abused that you just think, I can't even believe this stuff goes that far, but it does. It goes to the point where people don't just harm each other mentally and emotionally, but they attack each other and physically damage each other. And people end up in hospital and all sorts of stuff. Oh and this God. is where that crazy, you know, when it turns into that obsessive addiction, cause it is, it's, it's a love addiction. It's a love addiction. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of, I mean, for people that are like looking for resources to read about that stuff, I mean, there's a lot of 
yeah. books out there about, about codependent behavior that, yeah. you know, it comes down to early attachment trauma. It really yeah. does. It comes yeah. down to that because we don't understand how to uh, actively work through our emotions yeah. on our own. True. And we don't understand that, like, it's okay if someone is feeling a specific emotion and we have a different emotion. That dissonance is a part of life that keeps it interesting, in fact, <laughs> but yeah. also, you know, also works towards our survival. I mean, there's your body and your mind are constantly working at their highest efficiency, if you think about it. Mm. The fact that someone does get violent and angry makes in a way makes sense because it's like you want that you need to feel comforted and you need to feel safe and secure. Yeah. But what people don't realize is that you can do that on your own. Oh, you can, yes. Yes, yes, you can become your own parent. You can become that person that does that for you. You know, exactly. the, the, some of the meditations I had been doing, I had been, you know, I, I mentioned in my, letter to you I viewed my saw myself as a kid you know I grew up in, in a very abusive home emotionally yeah. and otherwise um, but I imagined myself being an adult viewing that I mean it's something that people can do for themselves you know, it's scary work I don't suggest you do it without help but yeah um, you know you can you can envision any kind of um, situation from when you're a kid and you can save yourself from that situation yes. you know wh yes. what does it what does it feel like to be the savior in that situation you know mm -hmm. and i in a way i've like picked up my small self and started to carry him around but the funny thing is i realized my, my brain in relationships was operating from that place mm -hmm. from the seven-year-old place or the five-year-old place of like yep. i just want to be loved yeah. I just need, I need to be loved, you know, because I didn't have it. And so, yeah. so yeah. you can be that person for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And that Dr. Hugh Len, who's the guy that does the whole Konopono, he's mm -hmm. got a little child meditation where he takes you back to the ah. child and he says, please let go. You don't need to remember what the memory is. You just let it go. And he takes you through and it just makes you cry your eyes out. But boy, yeah. it unblocks all this emotional stuff. Yeah, I'll absolutely. Below for people to watch it, but um, mm -hmm. I think it really is about unplugging. And because uh, it's like as a child, you've stored all these emotions in your body, and you, when someone scratches the surface in a relationship through an issue, through I'm trying to get love and I'm not getting it, that scratches the old wound, and there it comes out again. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to allow for those things to heal, you know, yeah. like, and, but it, 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 again, it's grief. It's grief. It's, it's grief. It's grief. It's a process. And yeah. we know that there are stages to grief. So if we've been, if you think about it cognitively, if we've been repressing our grief about not being loved, about, you know, uh, not receiving, not meeting our needs, our emotional needs as a kid, yeah. If we've been repressing that, we've never gone through those stages of grief. Exactly. We've only just allowed it to mm. kind of sit there un unresolved. And then we develop these obsessions with people that yeah. have, you know, opened those wounds because it's the closest thing we've had yeah. to understanding the healing process. Of mm. course, you know, of yeah. course you'd want to hold on to that person. Mm. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, but the grief of like getting over those attachment wounds and the things that do happen to us when we're kids, it's not, it's not as much of a, an upheaval as you'd think it would be. You know, it is actually a shift in mindset. It's work of course, but you have to shift your mind to make it possible for you to work through those feelings. You know, I think, I, I started journaling. I started writing down things I remember. You know, I, I read a really great book by a psychologist named Darlene Lancer. Yeah. Um, it's called Overcoming Shame and Codependency. Okay. Um, again, like talking about toxic shame, that feeling of like, I'm, I'm not enough, I'm unworthy. Um, and she has exercises at the end of each mm. chapter 
where you can, you know, you write down things that happened to you in your household, you know, um, or, you know, if you did, if you don't have a household, you know, you grew up with one parent, whatever, you know, like yeah. whatever your situation is, she has all these questions and you write, you write down your answers and it actually gives you a really nice objective look at, wait a minute. I've got some faulty programming going on. I've got some, <laughs> I've got some, you know, like some things my parents told me that might not have been exactly yeah. uh, grounded in, you know, the fact that I'm a unique and worthy individual. Yeah. You know, so. I might put the link to that book down below, Jordan, I'll, because you yeah. know the name and the author. I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll find it and I'll um, put a link down below because I Absolutely. think I agree with you. I think the childhood stuff, that's where all this stems from and you know you've got to revisit it it's on some level and let it out so that it no longer mm -hmm. drives you on automatic pilot that really yeah. you have to go back and do some work and absolutely yeah it really is important whether you work with someone one-on-one -on -one or you go to codependence anonymous or you go to yeah. love addicts anonymous you know there's all these programs for these things so yeah any 12-step program is any a good idea yeah and it's funny because a lot of the 12 step programs are, um, they are, they, a lot of them have like, you know, religious connotations, you know, just because of the way they began. Um, but it's funny if you start to replace those things. I mean, I, I, I went to a few meetings, but if you start to replace those things with like, oh, the universe or, oh, the, you know, it's, it's funny. It's, it's this work. It's the feeling of being like, okay, how do I trust in my higher power? I trust in my higher power by understanding that what I think becomes my reality, you yeah. know, what I focus on expands. Mm -hmm. So that is the higher power. And if I trust in that, I actually don't have any more questions about when is it going to happen yeah. and how, you know, I don't, I don't have that. I can live with morality and, and yeah. under, you know, and love for myself and not worry about, the things I'm trying to manifest coming into my life because I know that they will. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> good conversation. So, good yes, conversation. indeed. I can't believe yeah. we've been talking for over an hour. It's gone like, it feels like oh, wow. 10 minutes. Yeah, I know. I feel like I've just been <laughs> going, going, going. It's one, one, one. <laughs> it's a sign. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe I'm actually meeting you. <laughs> I can't believe I'm meeting you because I was reading yeah. your story and I just thought, yeah. oh my god, that is just like, you know, oh, it's yes. so beautiful. And you know no. what? I was saying to the universe, excellent, thank you for the 38 stories. I really want to. I don't, I want to have more than just people that are heterosexual. I want to, I want it to be that it's a cross section of society, you know, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. I was saying to the universe, okay, it's now time to expand this so that we get, you know, there's, there's, there's so many different variations and varieties of, of how people have sexual interaction. And I want it to be that, that, people get hurt in whatever shape or form they choose to be in relationship yeah. that they come forward when the time is right. And within four days of that, you popped up. Oh, hey. Yeah, I, never got to, I never got to tell you that, but I thought oh, I'll tell you when we do the interview because it was like, ah, yeah. oh, yes, you know. Yeah. Well, here I am. Here you are. <laughs> I'm queer and I'm here. <laughs> It's yeah. been an absolute pleasure, Jordan. Absolutely. Likewise. Oh, my goodness. It's so great to talk to you. Yeah, you too. You too. And thank you so much for the, I, you know, I know I said this in my comments and all the things, but yeah. it really, though, thank you so much for the things that you do. I mean, it's people like you that, that are really out there to help and, and, you know, guide people through healing. And it, it's a really, really beautiful thing that you're doing. It really is. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah. Look, I had my ass kicked five times in five different relationships, so it, something good had to come out of it. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. That's good. I did you ever <laughs> did you get did you get your specific person? I did. You did? 
yes yeah. we're together now and it's um it's easy it's lovely yeah and you know what if there's a moment that isn't i just go okay uh, if that's in front of me what am i doing right my yeah. thinking feeling and beliefs that i need to correct yeah absolutely less and less about the other person over the years more and more about self-reflection more and more that's about self love. more and more about everyone's you pushed out more and more about Hey, you're not sleeping enough. You're not drinking enough water. You didn't exercise. You right. got to want to attend to that stuff first. Attend to that. Right. Absolutely. I 100% agree. Yeah. Well, my lovely, I'm going to sign off because I've got to go and coach someone now. Okay. But cool. down the line for a minute. Um, do you want to say goodbye to everybody, and I'll say goodbye, and then you and I can just stay on for a minute to say goodbye. Sure. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for hanging out with Jordan and I. Ha, 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 ha.